Hey guys, how's it going? So today we're going to be talking about how to best prepare and crack a quantitative research interview at a typical hedge fund. Before we get into the details, let me spend a minute talking about my background. So my name is Prakash Dehun and I work as a research analyst at Millennium's New York City office. I've worked in the finance industry for about four and a half years and I'm an alumni of UC Berkeley High School of Business and Indian Institute of Technology Verki or IIT Verki. So let's get now started with how to best prepare for the interview. Now there are two ways to look at it. One is the top-down approach and the other one is the bottom-up approach. The top-down approach is to essentially look at all the frequently asked interview questions, learning about them, mastering them, and in the process you would also learn about the underlying topic. The second approach is the bottom-up approach where you first target the underlying topics, you learn and master them, and then you go to the interview questions. I've, I've worked on both these approaches and I personally find the top-down approach to be far more effective and less time-consuming. Now, let's first talk a little bit more about the top-down approach. So you need the interview questions in the first place. Now, there are two books that are very frequently you know, referenced on the Wall Street and the many, many of the questions you will find just are taken right from these books or they're just you know, simple derivatives or brothers or sisters of these questions. So what are these two books? They're called as the Red Book and the Green Book. I would particularly say Green Book is very important because it's where you would find all these tough questions, you know, uh, which the quants would ask, but they're essentially just right from these Green Books or they're very close uh, neighbors of those questions. I've given the link to both these books in the description of the video, but the name of the Green Book is A Practical Guide to Quantitative Finance Interviews and the Red Book is Heard in the Street. So let me talk a little bit more about how you should use these books. Now, these books are relatively short, but you will find very interesting involved, involving questions. And they can be daunting at first, but it's very natural to feel that way. It's just like when you first time sat on a bike and you know, you were, it, it, seemed, it could be daunting, but once you have your few pedals on the way, it becomes a second nature. So it's just like that. Uh, the good thing about these books is like you have questions by topics, so you don't have to learn these topics first, uh, like unless you have never learned them before. The way I did it was I would pick a question, set a time for it. If I can crack it in one go, it's great. If I don't, I would take a look at the hints uh, or I would just take a look at the solution, uh, you know, in the first place after understanding more about the question. And I would do two paths. The second pass is where I would not look at the solution and try to do the questions, you know, when, once I have really understood how these questions are done. And there, like I said, there's gonna be a lot of common patterns. So once you get a first few questions through the book, or once you hit that, you know, once you hit that category of questions, when you, once you cover them, the book will become a lot more easier. But the good news is, on the interview, you would find like 80% or 70 to 80% of the time, these questions, uh, you know, could, could be asked very, very easily. And, you know, uh, you, you would be surprised how frequently they would be asked. So I would highly recommend you to, you know, uh, go through these questions, use the top down approach. All right, so now let's talk about the bottom up approach. So in this approach, we'll first talk about what are the most frequently tested topics and some of the subtopics as well. And then, you know, I'll be linking the, in the description, I'll be linking some of the resources that you can use to cover them. Uh, let's first now get started with the most important topic, which is uh, statistics, mathematics, and probability. So I would say for probability, you could, uh, the questions in the green and the red book should be more than sufficient. Uh, you know, they employ topics like conditional probabilities, Sometimes they would, you know, uh, ask some more concepts like maximum likelihood estimation and so on. But I, again, if you go about these learning these topics, they can be a little bit lengthy. I would definitely recommend you to do the questions on the green and the red book, and they should be more than enough. Then in the statistics, I would say, you know, some of the most uh, tested topics are hypothesis testing. Uh, they essentially come into the category of statistical inferences, uh, inferential statistics. And sometimes you could add, be asked, uh, somebody could ask you, okay, how would you analyze the data? So you, you know, you, your knowledge of descriptive statistics, what kind of plots you can make, uh, you know, from data, how you identify outliers and all that kind of stuff could help. Uh, it, it, people definitely ask about linear regression or regression models. 
which are essentially predictive models, uh, you know, in the linear category of models. They're usually covered in a, in a, in a basically an engineering course and probability statistics or in a math major, you, you, you know, a first course in probability statistics most of the times covers it. Uh, but in case you have not done them before and you want to you know, review it, I've you know, linked a few courses uh, in the description of the video, feel free to check them out. Uh, then on the mathematics side, I would say, you know, some of the very tested topics are again, linear algebra, multivariable calculus. Now these topics are, why they ask it be, is because, you know, statistics and uh, machine learning models nowadays, you know, they leverage a lot of linear algebra and multivariable calculus in their algorithms. And, you know, learning about them is, is good because, you know, you essentially are covering the basics of the applications. And statistics, like I said, you know, it's very frequently used in the day job. The day job. Uh, it's not like you would be doing some rocket science research, but the concepts are essentially important to identify and understand whether your models are performing well or not. Now, the next topic I'm going to talk about is uh, computers. So computer science, uh, computer programming is an essential part of the job as well. Uh, first, let's talk about which language is important. So I would say usually nowadays I've seen uh, it's, it's Python or C++. Now, it depends on what kind of role you're going into. You may be exposed to a different language altogether, but most generally, I would say Python is, uh, is pretty much uh, like a universal language nowadays where you uh, can do data science on it, you can build models on it. There, there's very rich libraries you know, that can help you do pretty much anything. And the only downside is basically it's, it's a little slow. So if you're doing high frequency training, you probably need some C++ or uh, you know, people also nowadays just use C++-based libraries. That being said, what you need to know is you need to definitely know Python. It's good to be familiar with C++. Now, how do you get to learn both of these languages? Well, again, I've, I've linked a couple of resources. The best way I would say is uh, you learn these languages while you're learning another topic so that you know you're hitting two targets uh, with one arrow. Uh, another topic which is very much tested on the computer in the computer science realm is data structures and algorithms. Uh, I've been asked a few questions, uh, you know, in one of my first quantum interviews. Uh, and again, you know, there, there's some resources that are linked in the description below. Uh, it's good to know, you know, the basic algorithms. You don't have to be master of all of them, unless your job requires you to do, do the same. So if you're going for, let's say, for a quantitative developer job, you know, they could definitely delve deeper into these data structures and algorithms. Uh, you could also you know, take a look at my LinkedIn profile. I've, you know, I've also spent a reasonable amount of time doing a data structures and algorithms specialization because I, you know, I enjoyed the topic and I knew this is one of these topics where I did not have a lot of background initially and you know, it really helps a lot uh, to feel a lot more confident about your preparation. Practice these data structural algorithms in your, in say, C plus plus or Python, and that could, you know, help you uh, get uh, good, get good at it. Then the third thing is your knowledge about finance and economics. Now, many of the roles would probably just not expect you to know anything, but I would say, if you are going into an interview and you know uh, the concepts about, you know, what they would be using in a day-to-day -day role, it's it's always an edge, right? What I personally felt was, because I was I did my undergrad in, in civil engineering, and you know, I did not have any background in finance. I, I When I did two levels of CFA, it really helped me to get a really good, you know, grip on, okay, what are the different asset classes out there? You know, what are these various concepts in the fixed income markets? What are the different equity models that people use and so on? Then the next thing I would say is, in the interview, they're very much tested is the logic your intellectual or logical skills. And the way to do this is using the brain teasers. Again, the best way to you know, do them is you practice them. It's like, a, you know, it's like building a muscle. You practice them. Uh, I've mentioned the two books, Green Book and Red Book, which are you know, very, very effective in doing so. And uh, they can help you really come up to speed there. Uh, so these are like the four things. Now, if you like cover them, you should be in a pretty good shape. But like, it should help again, get you through like 80 to 85% there. If you want to go all the way to 95 to 99 percent of all all that stuff is out there, one thing I would tell you is definitely go through your resume. Anything you put on your resume, you should be ready to and ready and be confident to be tested on. There are a few more topics I would say you know which if you are very motivated you know you want to learn and it's gonna uh, get you to the your preparation to A plus level is machine learning. Uh, and again you know I'm, I'm gonna be linking a few resources on machine learning. You could also take a look at my LinkedIn profile. 
Uh, there, there are some good courses on Coursera and Udacity, uh, which can help you to really come to speed on machine learning. It is something which the industry is picking up now. Some of the people are still, you know, catching up, but some of some are moving faster than the others. Now there are a couple of topics I would say they're a little more, uh, you know, discretionary, but they can be tested. Like I've been tested on them. One of them is knowledge about the financial markets. When you're going to an interview, make sure you take a look at the major, you know, equity indices or fixed income, uh, you know, yield numbers uh, or currency rates. Just you know, right, right, getting into the interview because you could be tested on them, and it just tell tells an interviewer, okay, how much interest are you really in? Are you just looking for the money, or is it you're generally interested about this whole, uh, you know, sector? You could be tested on speed math, so you know they could give you a few mental math questions, and I was given a one mental math questions in one of my interviews, my first uh, in a quant job, and I was. Uh, to be honest, I was not super prepared. I'd done speed maths at some point of time, so I came close to the answer, but like these things probably they are like a brownie point. If you get them, they're help, definitely gonna help you get ahead in the race. And sometimes I've also seen people, you know, test a uh, few candidates on things like functional programming. So like, you know, there uh, you can easily find questions on functional programming on Google, or sometimes, you know, you would just see some of these questions being popped up here and there in the red or green book. But this is just another topic you should you know, keep in mind that you could be tested on. Uh, I'll be listing uh, lots of resources about these topics, you know, uh, as much as I can on these, uh, in the description of the video. My LinkedIn profile is, again, the path I have taken. Uh, some of the things I would say were bottom up, uh, but like I said, you know, uh, you know, it's a good approach if you want to be rigorous. If you've done top down approach and you want to then go bottom up, it's there's nothing that beats it, but I but I hope that you know uh, this this video helps you with understanding what the two ways in which you know you can really prepare for this interview. So if you found this video to be helpful, please make sure you like the video and subscribe to my channel. I must say this is my first YouTube video, so in case this is not perfect, please don't mind it. Uh, I look forward to your suggestions, so please comment or reach out to me on my LinkedIn or other social media platforms, and I look forward to hearing from you guys. I thank you very much for your time and your uh, patience to go through the video uh, and see you next time.